Shall I say our staple diet at this time in our morning worship? Namely, our studies in the first epistle written by John. We are going to be pursuing the path that is laid for us through this epistle. We may leave it occasionally when the church's calendar or something else requires it, but this is going to be our staple diet for some time. And we return to it today. Now, we're going to read as the basis of our message this morning, verses 3 to 6 in chapter 2. 1 John, chapter 2, verses 3 to 6. And hereby we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfect. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Now you remember the main thread of the preaches thus far. Having affirmed the historical character of the Christian faith in the beginning of chapter 1, the Apostle John then went on a step to indicate that the Christian fellowship is dominated and governed and determined in its nature by the being and the character and the nature. Our dreams through the edge of life is tale of where we were. A story unfolds through the eyes of philosopher. Our lives are recorded like sound upon a tape. Operated by a computer in this heavenly state.
they continue to profess that. And the second statement is this. They apparently continue to claim to abide in Christ. Look at verse 6. He who says, says John, he abides in him. Ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Now, obviously, we have the same kind of thing. The heretics are saying, you see, now we've left the community, we've left, we've left the church, but we still know God, and we're still abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. This shows how influenced they've been by Christian teaching, because it's all reminiscent of the allegory of John 15, the vine and the branches. Now, to abide in Christ involves two things. First of all, it involves that a man is in Christ. You've got to be in him before you can abide in him. So by nature we belong not to Christ's stock, but to the Adamic stock. Who then is the great division between us and the Adam? And our mother in Christ. The Bible doesn't really divide people into cultured and illiterate. Doesn't divide people into rich and poor, doesn't divide people into black and white. The Bible treats all these as incidental and trivial, comparatively speaking. But the great division in the Bible is this are you in Adam or are you in Christ? Have you been born once or have you been born again? Now a Christian is a man who's been excised from the Adamic stock and incorporated into the stock of the second and the last Adam. In other words, in the language of John 15, he is a man in Christ, or a woman in Christ. Incorporated into Christ, into the life of you, like the brand receiving the new life. That's the best way. Continue to claim to abide in. I found this at one and the same time one of the most sweet and one of the They apparently continue to claim to abide in. continue to claim to abide in Christ. Look at verse 6. He who says, says John, he abides in him, ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Now, obviously,